Mina, konbanwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. Joshua chapter 22, verse 10. And when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great impressive altar. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of the Jordan, on the children of Israel's side. When the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together at Shiloh to go to war against them. <clears throat> so we have the Israelites on this side of the Jordan. Um, the majority of the tribes coming against these other tribes, uh, the smaller number of tribes on the other side of the Jordan. And no, I'm not necessarily getting the sides right geographically. I'm just... It's just kind of like, okay, over here and over here, and this is like a river right down the middle. It's kind of flowing. That looked kind of ridiculous. Anyway, so, and on a very serious topic at that, because they were ready to wipe out two and a half tribes of the children of Israel. What has happened in this chapter is Joshua has basically said, okay, you guys have finished up under me. It was... Um, Joshua's, I guess, retirement, so to speak. Just at that time, he said, you can read it earlier in the chapter, by all means look behind me. Again, it's Joshua chapter 22. <clears throat> Joshua has basically finished his um, reign, isn't quite the right word, but he was the one in charge of all of the tribes. He was sort of kind of the head, kind of like Moses was. Not a king, not elected, and not a judge yet either, but still, for the most part, in charge. He was the one that all the tribes looked to for leadership. So, his time has come to an end. He's like, okay, you guys are done. It's kind of weird because in Judges, they're obviously not done. But we'll get there. That was a bit of a tangent. Moving along. Children of Israel are ready to wipe out the other um, two and a half tribes. As it turns out, what they did wasn't against the Lord, wasn't sinful, wasn't bad. It was actually a monument to remind the majority of the tribes, hey, even though we're on this side of the Jordan, we're Israelites too. We worship and love the Lord as well. And this monument's going to be a reminder to your descendants and future generations that, hey, just because we're on the other side of the Jordan, you can't say we're not true Israelites. You can't say we don't worship the same God as you. So... The other nine and a half tribes, they backed off, and they were like, okay, that's cool. We can live with this. And it, was, it ended up being a good thing. And what it made me think about when I read it was sometimes you see churches fighting against each other, or sometimes churches splitting within each other. And that is, it, that is a topic really worthy of a whole sermon, and I'm not going to promise to do it this upcoming Sunday, but... It's, a, it's definitely a topic worthwhile. And so many people have been hurt by church splits. I don't know if maybe you will watch this one day. It's so funny. I have only 20 subscribers. My preaching videos aren't watched very often. That's fine. They're going to be on here on YouTube for as long as the site endures, unless my channel or those videos get taken down for whatever reason. They're going to be here. So who knows how many people will watch this in the future? Anyway, untold numbers of people have been hurt by church splits, church splits, church um, schisms, and church breakups. It's been the first church that I got saved at actually went under a split at one point and didn't quite recover from it. And another church I went to at one time. I had left the church by the time it split, but I heard about how it had split, and I heard how before I even got there, there had been splits. And sometimes the majority of these splits are very, very bad, um, and they're not for any good reason. In fact, if the evidence was looked at like it was here, the splits wouldn't have even happened. Everyone could have said, oh, my mistake, I'm sorry, you're actually serving the same God I am. A lot of the times people, instead of talking about it, they, uh, the nine and a half tribes sent Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, as well as one delegated leader from each of the tribes of Israel to go to the two and a half tribes and say, hey, 
If you guys need to, leave that side of the Jordan, come over here and have a, take a possession um, of the land with us and just leave that land if it's bad, but don't turn away from God or else we'll destroy you. And a lot of the times these church splits and whatever are not even, there's not even a good heart motivation behind it. It's about the color of the windows, the color of the carpet. A particular person got elected deacon because they, you know, they didn't want to be elected deacon or a new pastor was hired and a lot of people didn't like the pastor. Some rumor started about the pastor that was unfounded and untrue, but a lot of the people listened anyway and didn't care. And so much could be cleared up just by talking it out. And if the heart motivation was right, let's bring people to the Lord. Let's remind our brothers and sisters in Christ to stay close to God, to draw close to Him. And we don't want to separate from you, but we will if you're turning away from God. And if that simple inquiry were made, and if the Lord Himself was at the heart of the issue, and not some personality or some object, like the color of the carpet, so many church splits could simply be avoided altogether. And it is sad that the church, particularly in America, has such a history of that. This is a topic I'm going to have to tackle it later at full length, but that's what this reminded me of. And if you're going through something like this, my heart and my prayers go out to you. Quick prayer to close this out. Finally, God, in Jesus' name, I'm simply asking for healing for those who have gone under church splits, who've been hurt by leaders, who've been hurt by people who are basically eating away at each other and just stabbing each other in the back and not behaving like Christians at all. Some people watching this video may have even walked away from Christ because of that. I pray that you would start bringing healing to them. Even if this video isn't what draws them back to Christ, that you, Lord, would start bringing healing to their lives. That you would please bring healing to us, the body of Christ, because there's a lot of bad right now that needs to be fixed. Please help. Please mend. Please heal your own body. And I pray that judgment would begin in the house of the Lord, as one of the epistles of Peter says. Because when your judgment hits, yeah, it'll hurt for a while. But like a loving father, you discipline those that you love. So please let your love be on your church. Please let your discipline be on your church. Please bring restoration to your church that we in turn may give your gospel to the world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you guys. God bless.